Thank you. Chief. We could leave the lights on. <laughs> all right. Good afternoon. Welcome. It's great to see you all here today. Um, thank you to all my partners, local and tribal, my federal partners who sit here with us today. Uh, my name is Alex Ubayas. I'm the United States Attorney here in the District of New Mexico. Um, and it's my great privilege and honor uh, to welcome Merrick Garland, the Attorney General of the United States, to the land of enchantment to sit down with us and speak about his priorities for law enforcement, for partnership, and for combating violent crime. With that, sir. Thanks, Alex. I well, <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, earlier today, the Department of Interior Secretary Deb Holland and I um, went to the uh, Bureau of Indian Affairs uh, MMP unit, uh, Missing or Murdered uh, uh, Indigenous Persons Unit. Um, we were briefed by experts there and from this office, from Alex's office. Uh, we're all working together to make Indian country safer. We're all underscored our commitment uh, to doing everything we can um, to, to address the missing or murdered indigenous persons crisis. Then we met with tribal leaders from the eight northern pueblos of New Mexico to learn what each tribe is experiencing in its community. Since 2021, the Justice Department has provided $12.9 million uh, to support a number of tribal justice initiatives across the northern pueblos. We are committed to working with our partners to ensure that all tribal communities are safe. Now, I'm very grateful to be able to sit with all the um, partners, um, federal, state, local, and tribal, who are gathered around this table. This group of leaders represent the law enforcement officers across the state who make daily sacrifices to keep their communities safe. This also represents the collaborative approach that is the at the heart of the Justice Department's effort to battle violent crime. When I became Attorney General three and a half years ago, I knew that the most powerful tool we would have to fight violent crime were these collaborations, these partnerships with our federal, state, and local. You want me to start all over again? Let's start. <laughs> federal, state, uh, uh, and local partners. That was my experience when I was a uh, line attorney in the early 1990s fighting violent crime and drug trafficking. I'm going a little too, too close. I'll talk louder, maybe. Oh, now we're getting feedback. Good. Um, fighting violent crime, uh, and later in the 1990s, when I was a Justice Department supervisor, uh, supervising and strategizing about the best ways to fight to violent crime and drug trafficking. So we built an anti-violent crime strategy based on the experience of the 1990s, our collaborations across federal law enforcement with state, local, federal and tribal law enforcement with partner agencies like the Albuquerque Community Safety and with the communities we all serve. And we fortified these with the latest technologies with, that we now have for identifying the individuals who are the greatest drivers of violent crime and getting them off the streets to make our communities safer. And now we have seen some results. According to the Albuquerque Police Department, there were about a 19% decrease in homicides and a 41% decrease in robberies in 2023 as compared to 2022. This is consistent with what we've been seeing nationally, where last year we saw one of the lowest violent crime rates in 50 years and the greatest drop in homicides in 50 years. We know, however, that progress in Albuquerque and in many communities is not always consistent and is still uneven. And of course, there is no acceptable level of violent crime. The Justice Department is working here in New Mexico and across the country to arrest violent felons, to disrupt drug trafficking, and to prosecute the individuals most responsible for violence. Last month, working with the Albuquerque Police Department, ATF and FBI, this U.S. Attorney's Office successfully prosecuted a felon who unlawfully possessed a firearm and shot a woman in the back of the head at a Walmart. She survived, but she required emergency surgery and extensive rehabilitation. Thanks to the work of this office and its partners, the defendant was sentenced to 15 years in federal prison. Also last month, this office secured a six-year sentence for a man who illegally possessed firearms and used them to threaten his wife. The defendant in that case was under a court protection order that prohibited him from harassing, stalking, or threatening his wife. 
Despite that, he went to the family residence, stockpiled an arsenal of weapons, and held his wife in the garage against her will. Their son overheard, called 911, and after hours of negotiations, law enforcement arrested the defendant. The man's conduct violated a federal statute that prohibits firearm possession by those who, like the defendant, are under a court protection order that prohibit them from harassing, stalking, or threatening intimate partners. This is the same statute that the Justice Department successfully defended before the United States Supreme Court earlier this year. This case under underscores why that statute is so important to the department's work to combat domestic violence here in New Mexico and across the country. We will continue to combat violent, against, uh, violent crime and firearms offenses that endanger our communities. Now at the same time, we are working relentlessly to get fentanyl, which is the deadliest drug threat this country has ever faced, out of our communities. Last year, this U.S. Attorney's Office participated in a joint enforcement operation in Carlsbad that resulted in eight drug trafficking indictments. In April, three of those defendants pled guilty for their roles in the conspiracies to distribute significant volumes of fentanyl, methamphetamine, and cocaine. That same month, working with the Bureau of Indian Affairs, Homeland Security Investigations, ICE, and the New Mexico State Police, this office secured a 14-year sentence for a man was caught with more than 19 pounds of fentanyl in his hotel room. And back in March, the office secured a guilty plea from a man who intended to distribute more than 32,000 fentanyl pills and 1.7 kilos of methamphetamine. Investigators found he had used a social media platform to advertise and sell his drugs. There are too many families in New Mexico and across the country who have suffered whose lives have been shattered by fentanyl poisoning. That is why we will never give up on fighting this terrible epidemic. The examples I've shared with you are just a snapshot of the work this office does every day to fulfill the Justice Department's mission to keep our communities safe, to protect civil rights, and to uphold the rule of law. I am very proud of the work of the U.S. Attorney and of all the men and women of this office for the District of New Mexico. And I am equally proud of the partnerships they have nurtured with the federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies represented in this room. These people work every single day to keep the communities in New Mexico safe. And with that, we'll begin our discussion of violent crime around the table. Thank you all very much for coming.